right? So as we know that the PMOS transistor, uh, uh, it is it is actually made up of uh, P-type uh, uh, dopants, uh, uh, the source and the drain. So this is the source and then this is the drain. Uh, I'll also write it down. So, so that it will be easier for you to understand. So this uh, being the source, and this being the drain and of course this will be the body so the body is uh, the n type so similar to the nmos transistor where we had the body of p type here the body is of n type uh, the drain and the source uh, are of uh, you know the p type so in fact in this case if you want a slightly more current i will have it as p plus type uh, uh, this is the oxide layer very similar to the nmos transistor and uh, this will be the gate layer again it will be made up of polysilicon or any kind of a metal especially the aluminium or polysilicon uh, so this becomes the structure of the pmos transistor a uh, cross-sectional structure very similar to that of the nmos transistor but uh, it has an exactly opposite uh, polarities so whenever we see uh, the diffusion pockets uh, diffusion pockets uh, being a p plus here it will be the p uh, pmos transistor and whenever we see the n plus uh, in the pocket uh, diffusions we we call it as an n type uh, uh, transistor or an nmos transistor so the, the reason why it is called as a pmos transistor is uh, you know we have this p plus diffusion pockets as source and drain and then once the inversion uh, layer is formed uh, or a channel is formed here uh, then we will have the holes uh, that will be propagating from the source to drain and thereby we will get the current. So basically the majority carriers are actually coming from the P diffusion pockets and that's why it is called as a P type a, a MOS transistor or a P MOS transistor. Right, uh, so uh, to begin with, uh, you know, when we, uh, to get the current itself, we need uh, uh, some kind of a voltage source to be applied. So the potential difference here uh, is been applied uh, across the drain to source, very, very similar to the NMOS transistor. And uh, the potential is applied between uh, the gate to the source. Again, very, very similar to that of the NMOS transistors. Now remember, uh, note here that uh, 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 the source is always kept at a higher potential than with respect to the gate. And here also, you know, with respect to the V, uh, the source and drain, the source is kept at a higher potential with respect to the drain. Right, so the, the way we want the current uh, uh, is, or way we want the majority carriers to be transformed is from the source to the uh, drain side. So hence the source is at, is, is at a higher potential than with respect to the drain. So we have this, uh, you know, VSD uh, labeled as VSD. What it implies is the VS value, the potential of source is greater than the potential of the drain. Right, and similarly here, uh, again, I've noted down the potential here, the potential source of the, the source is greater than that of the gate. So the gate is at a negative potential with respect to the source. And uh, the body is usually, uh, uh, you know, the, we usually consider to be at uh, the VDD, right? Or VDD in the sense at a higher potential, right? So I'm going to write this as uh, VDD or, uh, you know, this could be considered at, to be a higher potential. Right, in a 65 nanometer technology node, we can consider it to be close to one volts. Right, so in this case, the inversion channel is formed uh, only when we have the gate voltage negative, this being, uh, this being negative. So if I have this negative, then remember that the majority carriers of the n-type body will be the electrons, the minority carriers will be the holes, so that is when you know, the, in, during the inversion mode, the holes, the minority carriers, right, forms the channel here. So the minority carriers will be attracted towards the interface, th that is the interface of the oxide, and thereby we will get, uh, uh, you know, this uh, gets attracted and thereby the channel is formed, uh, completing the source to the drain, and thereby we have these majority carriers of the source, uh, you know, have a path to flow to the drain side. And thereby I'll get the current of uh, IDS or rather in this case it will be IESD because it is the holes which is going from source to drain and thereby the current direction will also be the same. Right, remember in the NMOS, the majority carriers are the electrons which are flowing from the source to drain and thereby my current direction is from actually from drain to source. Here it's the holes which are flowing from the source to drain and thereby my current direction is from uh, source to drain. 
The current uh, equations can also be estimated very, very similar to how we have estimated for the uh, NMOS uh, transistor. So uh, the current is ISD and we have a linear channel and then a saturation channel, uh, linear region and a saturation region. Again, the linear region, uh, you know, as per the NMOS, uh, we had this, uh, you know, a VDS value, VDS value for an NMOS transistor. If it is smaller than VGS minus VT, then it is in linear region. And if it goes above VGS minus VT, then we have a pinch off region, uh, pinch off uh, region or the saturation region. Where what it means is at the drain point, the channel is not formed. We have a tapered channel. And at a drain region, uh, closer to the drain region, the channel uh, gets disconnected. Thereby, we achieve the saturation region. The current doesn't increase uh, when the VDS value goes beyond VGS minus VT. Similarly, we will have it for the PMOS. So whenever uh, uh, VSD goes above VSD minus VT, uh, then it will be the saturation region or the pinch off region. Right be below that, it will be in the linear region, and then the linear current equation is given by very very similar to what we had seen in the uh, NMOS. So instead of VGS, it will be VSD. Instead of VDS, it will be VSD. Uh, and then there is a mod here, which implies that this is actually a positive value. Uh, so uh, as per our 65 nanometer technology node, we will consider this to be 0.3 volts again, the positive value of 0.3. Generally, the threshold voltage uh, is defined in terms of uh, the VGS or rather in this case, uh, you know, in, even in the NMOS transistor, it will be considered in terms of the VGS value. So when we apply for an NMOS transistor, when uh, the G, you know, the, the gate side is positive with respect to the source. So at 0.3 volts and above that, um, we will have the channel that has been formed due to the minority carriers which are being attracted to the interface. Right, so even in this case, with respect to the gate, now, but gate is being a negative potential. So as the gate potential reaches minus 0.3 volts, that is when the channel is being formed and uh, thereby we have this uh, channel connecting the source to the drain. Right, so the VT is always defined with respect to the gate potential. And in PMOS, because if it is, uh, you know, in PMOS it is actually, uh, uh, the gate potential turns out to be negative, so that's why it is defined as minus 0.3 volts for the PMOS. That's what I have written in here. Right, so remember VT for NMOS is positive 0.3 volts, VT for PMOS is minus 0.3 volts, and to get uh, the current which is a positive current, we take this as the mod of VT. Right, similarly for the saturation current, we take it as mod of VT. Going forward, uh, so if I want to draw the current uh, versus the voltage characteristics, uh, so there are two voltages, VGS and VDS for the NMOS transistor, and uh, the current is IDS. Uh, uh, and similarly for PMOS transistor, it is uh, VSD or it is VSG, and the current is IST, right? Here I have uh, noted down the y-axis as the current, so IDS for PMOS, and uh, the x-axis as VDS, Right? For different values of VGS, if VGS is equal to 1 volts, if VGS is equal to 2 volts, uh, this, is more, this is what we will get the current. So if I put uh, different values of uh, VDS from starting from 0, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on, uh, I'll get uh, some current here. This will be the linear region and this will be the saturation region. Right? So this being the, the the saturation region and then this being the uh, the linear region. So if I choose a VGS of close to 2 volts, uh, in this particular curve, uh, what I'm saying is this one, we consider it to be a linear region, right? And this one, we consider it to be the saturation region, right? Where the current is constant. Right, and similarly for the uh, IDS uh, or rather the current taken from the PMOS transistor, uh, we will have this as the, the linear region and this one as the saturation region. Remember, note here that uh, I've considered VGS. So I've considered this VGS here and that's why I've considered uh, minus of two. So what it means is it's nothing but a VSG of positive two volts. Remember that the source is always at a higher potential with respect to the gate. And so in this case, we have uh, the gate to be uh, 
uh, gate to be at a lower potential and that's why VSD. Instead of that, I can uh, reverse it and say it as VGS of minus two volts. Similarly, VGS of minus volts, uh, minus one volts, uh, which is nothing but uh, VSD of positive one. Right, so th these are two such representations. Right, and uh, remember here beta P uh, for PMOS and beta N, beta N uh, which we had seen in the last session was mu N C oxide W by L, very very similar to the to, the, the, to that for the PMOS which is mu P C oxide W by L. Right, so looking at this particular graphs, what we can say is if W by L uh, T oxide which is embedded within this C oxide uh, is same. So C oxide is also same, T oxide is same, and that's why C oxide is same. Uh, C oxide, remember that C oxide is nothing but uh, epsilon naught, uh, the dielectric of the oxide uh, divided by T oxide. So if all the dimensions are same, what we are saying is mu P into the C oxide WL and mu N N uh, multiplied by C ox into WL, right? So based on this the mu P value, Based on this uh, mu n value, we will get the BP, uh, beta p and the beta n, which are the constants. All right. Although I have drawn this IV characteristics uh, such that it looks like the current from taken from the PMOS is very very high, right? Uh, and generally, we will have the mu p value to be to be almost you know very very uh, close to half that of the uh, the mu of n. So the mobility of the holes is approximately half that of the mobility of the electrons, right? So in that case, you know, if all the dimensions are same here, I cannot have the PMOS giving a much higher current than that of the NMOS. So something is wrong here. So what we'll do is we will call this uh, a width as PMOS and width of this as NMOS, where here the PMOS width, we will say that it is higher than that of the width of the NMOS. Right, so the width of the PMOS is greater than the width of the NMOS and thereby I will get uh, this to be very, very high. Right, so in that case, my uh, current uh, graph, current versus the voltage graph turns out to be, um, uh, is justified. Because the PMOS current, I have shown it to be higher than that of the NMOS current. Right, so in this case, if uh, the width of the PMOS and width of the NMOS are same, uh, and of course the length of the PMOS and NMOS transistors will be same, and the oxide, uh, I know C oxide, uh, the capacitance of the oxide uh, for the PMOS and NMOS, if it is same, and the, and the mobility, as I've said earlier, the mobility of the PMOS will be less than that of the mobility of the, uh, of the NMOS, that means the mobility of the holes is less than the mobility of the electrons, then in that case, I will get the saturation value, uh, which will be nothing but uh, beta N here, right, VGS minus VT, the whole square, divided by 2. And here it will be uh, beta P by 2, right, VSG minus mod of VT, the whole square. Right, so if I choose a VGS of two volts or a VSD of two volts, all right, my uh, this value, the current value beta p by two into VSD minus VT, the whole uh, the mod of VT, the whole square, will be exactly half that of uh, the NMOS current. So that's why I have drawn this uh, the blue line, which represents the PMOS current, to be exactly half that of the NMOS current. Right, and similarly for uh, you know the other voltages. If this is the case, if the widths if the dimensions are the same, then I will get dimensions of the PMOS and NMOS uh, transistors are same, then I will get a current which is exactly half that of the uh, NMOS current. So the NMOS current uh, with the same dimension is likely to give me more uh, current. Uh, to sum it all, uh, we will just have a look at the 65 nanometer technology node. Uh, so the 65 nanometer technology node uh, means that there is a particular process in place, a fabrication process to build up these transistors. And uh, it uses the following parameters. So the thickness of the oxide will be uh, 1.05 nanometer for both NMOS and PMOS. The threshold voltage that has been characterized after the transistor has been built and that is when the, uh, the inversion uh, 
uh, inversion channel has been formed that is characterized to be at 0.3 volts. The mobility uh, for one particular, you know, this is called as a long channel model. So that means uh, the associated um, side effects have been ignored and we will see what the side effects uh, uh, I meant in the later slides, in the later lectures. So considering an ideal model or a long channel model, uh, we have the mobility to be around 80 uh, centimeter square per volt second for the electrons and 40 centimeter square per volt second for the holes. So this is for the electrons, uh, the mobility, and then this is for the holes. Right, and then W by L dimensions, we are considering it to be four by two, unless any other width is given or asked to, to be estimated, where two lambda is considered as 50 nanometers. Right, and two lambda is considered to be 50 nanometers for both NMOS and uh, PMOS. Right, so that means that the lambda here is considered to be 25 nanometers for both NMOS and PMOS. And lambda is a very uh, primitive uh, length or the dimensions that we can actually use for uh, in the 65 nanometer technology node. For any kind of a process, so let's say for a 180 nanometer technology node, we will have a lambda value. For a 90 nanometer technology node also, we will have a lambda value. For 65 nanometer also, we have a lambda of 25 nanometers. So what it represents is, this is the, the minimum uh, dimensions which we can scale, right? So if I have a length of uh, um, um, uh, 50 nanometers, I can actually go to uh, 75 nanometers, I can actually go to 100 nanometers and then so on. So we, you can actually have the dimensions uh, of the transistors scaled in terms of lambda, right? So if tomorrow I have the same design, but if I go for a different process or a technology node, my lambda will change, but uh, everything else will remain the same. So this lambda is kind of a scalable design rules, right? Which will use it, which will help in uh, manufacturing the transistors or the overall design. 